Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Belmont Park here on Saturday. It is June the 9th, 2018. It's Belmont Stakes Day from Belmont, and I'm going to look at all the stakes races on today's program. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and I mean it around the world. And join me in a few weeks' time for my Royal Ascot previews here on YouTube. Um, excellent day of racing from Belmont. Um, you know, you have stakes races galore. Uh, I'm going to look at races 2 through 11. I'm going to go through every horse in the Belmont stakes, which is race number 11. I have some good thoughts about some horses there. You know, it, 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 you're going to make money with this card at Belmont. If You know, it, it's just a great day of racing. The best day in America outside the Breeders' Cup, I think. So, um, let's get on to it. We're going to start off at race number 2 here from Belmont. The second race, the local prep race for the Dwyer coming up in a few weeks' time. But the second race, it's the 8th run of the Easy Goer, purse $150,000. It's for three year olds here. Field of eight horses going the distance of ground of 1,700 meters or the distance of ground of one mile and 1 16th on the Belmont main track. And I show the diagram. It just gives me a second to look down in my notes. Just bear with me. My top selection here in the in the Easy goer, the local prep race for the Dwyer. My top selection here, I like the six horse breaking the rules. I'm gonna go six two five eight in the superfecta. That's my top four. Six two five eight super. My top six my top selection here, the six horse breaking the rules. Four to one. I read Ortiz Juniors on the Shug McGay he trained three old cult by Warfront. Horses most recent out and came on the sixth of May here at Belmont. Six furlongs and allowance race for seventy five thousand, non one X. This horse won by three quarters of a length. Stalked early and you know got the lead and then this horse took off clear a very nice victory for this horse second off before that the 24th of march at goldstream six furlongs and mean special with 48,000. horse won by a neck stalked early got the lead and then he took off clear you know since that last run at belmont this horse has been training very nicely the mile 16 should be up this horse's alley, and I think here today he should run a big one. So I'll use him along with the two horse mask. I think this um, two horse mask could run a big race at 5 to 2. 3 0 Colt by Tappet. Chad Brown trains. Javier Castellano is up. His most recent ad and came at uh, Churchill and Sloppy going one mile in the Pat Day mile. He pitched eighth by 15 and a quarter lengths, and he just never was really there. Tired out of it, wide, just drove that race out. It was his first race since January 6th, also, at Goldstream Park. One mile in the Mucho Macho Man. Source won by six and a quarter lengths. I lead all throughout. Very easy victory. And then at Belmont, six and a half main special weight, 75,000 last fall. Horse won by three lengths. Sat back early, but got the lead and then took off clear. You know, I think second off the layoff here been training well. He's shown a lot better than he did in the Pat Day Mile. And another horse really to talk about here is going to be the five horse, Prince Lucky. He ran the Sir Barton a few weeks ago at Pimlico, mile 16th, May the 19th. He finished third, sat third most of the race. The winner, Axman, had some easy fractions, just went out, uh, in, just walked in the park there. This horse just really didn't show up. But I think coming here, one turn mile and a 16th, with a little pace in front of him, if there's a pace meltdown, I think he can get a piece of it. Um, you know, he was recently Gelden, and his first start as Gelden last time out was a good race. He's been training well since the Pimlico race. Dry track. I'll, I might use him in a multi-race if I play the early pick five. But to tell you the truth, the late pick, the all-stakes pick four, starting off with the just game, looks like you can make a lot of money with it. A lot of prices there. So I might wait until that. But if I feel adventurous and hit some money on Friday and have some extra ones, I might use this horse in an early pick five. But to recount my best for race number two now from Belmont, it's the eighth running of the Easy Goer. As a top selection, I'll use the six horse breaking the rules. Uh, multi-race. I'll go 625, uh, and in my Superfecta, I'll go 6258. So now let's get on to race number three from Belmont. Race number three from Belmont. It's the 50th running of the Odgum Fifth, grade one per $750,000. This race is for Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds and upwards. Field of eight horses going the distance of ground of 1,700 meters, or the distance of ground of one mile and one sixteenth on Belmont's Big Sandy main track. 1700 meters a mile 16th this race is for the older ladies um my top selection here i like the one horse i'm bridled mo i'm gonna go one six seven four in the superfecto one six seven four super uh in, in a multi-race i'll go one six but it's my top selection here i like the one horse i'm bridled mo four to one 
Five-year-old mare by Uncle Mo, uh, top electric trains, Johnny V. Up. Horse's most recent outing came on 13th of April at Oakland, mile 16th in a grade one Apple Blossom handicap. Horse won by two and a quarter lengths that day. You know, stalked early on, a little, a little bit wide at the top of the lane, but she had a great turn of foot to get the victory, beating Unique Bello that day, who won next start out. His horse won very nicely there. Before then, the Royal Delta at Goldstream Mile on the 19th of February. His horse finished fourth by five and a quarter lengths. You know, why post show? Just really never got there. Martini Glass, who won and won next start out, just ran a little bit of a better race. His horse just didn't show up off the break. And then before the 21st of April, 2017, at Keelan, a mile and a 16th in grade three, double dog dare. Horse won by three quarters in length. Had only three other rival rivals that day. Got the lead and then took off clear after stalking. Um, this horse really liked the one turn mile. You know, Top Hunter tra trains his horses here at Belmont during the most of the year uh and this horse you know is based at belmont but through her 10 starts so far has never run here she's making her first start locally today and i think it's going to be a winning one at four to one but if she doesn't show up um I, I i like the six horse a lot a little bit also abel tasman um you know she's eight to five mike smith is on this one this four-year-old flea by quality road uh bought by for trains this horse is most recent out and first off the layoff on the fourth of may at churchill mile 16th in the grade one latrion this horse finished fourth by three and a quarter lengths 60 cents to the dollar favorite she needed the race i did back her that day and she, and she lost of course you know she didn't have the best to start uh, you, you know had a little traffic trouble and she and she needed the race i think second off the break coming back here to belmont she, run, she should run a little bit better. Before then, the Breeders' Cup distaff at Del Mar, mile on the 8th of the 3rd. Horse finished second by half length. Sitting towards the back of the pack early on, she had a decent turn of foot at the end. She, you know, forever on bridle ran a hell of a race, but this horse was second best there, facing older horses for the first time. And then the Cotillion at Parks, mile 16th, September the 23rd. Horse finished second by two lengths. Closed up well from the back of the pack. You know, didn't have the best beginnings, but she closed up well. Um, you know, she actually won three in a row last, starting last May and then ending last summer and the and the um in the coaching club she won the coaching club very nicely at saratoga won the acorn here at belmont very nicely last uh, belmont stakes day and then won the um uh the kentucky oaks at churchill very nicely from y poster in 2017 won by one and quarter lengths had a great turn of foot took good, full advantage of the uh, pace meltdown there um but i like this horse a lot here today at eight to five horse she should do well uh and um i'll use her in a multi-race so to recap my bets for the third from belmont it's the 50th running the grade one odgan phipps as a top selection I like the one horse. I'm bridled Mo. I'm gonna go one six seven four in the Superfecta. I'll go one six in a multi race. So now let's get on to race number four from Belmont. Race four from Belmont. It's the 88th running of the Acorn, the Grade One Acorn, going for a purse of seven hundred thousand dollars. This racer's for Phillies three year olds here. Field of seven horses going the distance of ground of sixteen hundred meters or the distance of ground of one mile on the Belmont main track. 1600 meters one mile and I think this is going to be, out of all the races today, a lot of them are wide open. This one, I think the chalk's going to get in. That's going to be the three-horse Manomi girl. I think she should run a big one, so she'll be my top pick. The only way to make money with this race, I think, will be playing the uh, the superfectors or the trifectas. Because uh, on a win wager, you're not going to make a lot of money with Manomi girl. Uh, I'm going to go three, five, one, two in the superfecta. That's my top four. But uh, single in the multi-race, three-horse Manomi girl. Four to five, Florent Giroux is on this three-old filly by Tapazar. Brad Cox trained. This horse is most recent. Now and came at Churchill, Mon Leith May the 4th in the Kentucky Oaks. This horse won by half length, and, you know, she had a wide post draw, uh, and didn't have the best trips early on, but she got the lead, and she held on, and ran a great race. Uh, Wonder Godot, who finished second, you know, challenged this horse at the end, but this horse just held on. Very nice and determined race. I think coming back to a one-turn mile, this horse went a lot, you know, one-turn mile, I think this horse is bred for, and she should do a lot better than she did in the Kentucky Oaks, I think. Before then, the Ashland at Keeneland, a mile 16th, April the seventh horse from by five and a half lengths going two turns at keeneland you need speed from the rail and this horse had it just had a very nice victory there and then the rake saw alexandra at fairgrounds mile 16th february 17th this horse won by two and a half lengths changed tactics that day because she hit the gate going out of it she came from the back of the pack closed up well to get the victory there but normally this horse comes from the front end she has a lot of speed i like her a lot here today Four to five, single in the multi-race, uh, early pick five, pick four, whatever you're going to play. Uh, but the only way to make money is going to be playing the, the exotics like the super. So here's my super play to recount my selections for race number four from Belmont. It's the 88th running of the grade one, 700,000 acorn. Going to go with the three horse Minomi girl. Going to go three, five, one, two in the superfecto. So now let's get on to race number five from Belmont. 
race number five from Belmont. It's the 130th running of the Brooklyn Invitational. Grade two, purse $400,000. This race is for four-year-olds and upwards. Field of nine horses going the distance of ground of 2,400 meters or the distance of ground of one mile and one half on the Belmont main track. One lap around Big Sandy. 2,400 meters, a mile and a half. My top selection here, and I'm going to do a pick three starting off with this race. My top selection here, I like the two-horse opportunity. I'm going to go 2-3-4-9 in the Superfecta. 2-3-4-9 Super to the um, multi-race scenario, to the pick three. Uh, I'm going to go too deep here. I'm going to use the two and the three. I think it's a two-horse race between those two. Um, but uh, first horse we'll talk about is my top selection, the two-horse opportunity. Five to two. Flavian Pratt is on the seven-year-old horse by any given Saturday. Bob Baffer trains Flavian Pratt on this one. Horse's most recent outing came on the 4th of May at Churchill, a mile and one sixteenth in the grade two Al Sheba. This horse finished fourth by seven lengths. Didn't have the best of starts. You know, it had to steady early on and just, it just wasn't his day to win. I think getting the mile and a half, you know, it's just the kind of horse he's built for this distance. And I think he should really run well, run well and love Belmont. He's already one for one here at Belmont. Before that, he ran the Tokyo City at Santa Anita, a mile and a half, April the 8th. He won by six and a half lengths. You know, he's facing nobody. He's 20 cents a dollar, a little bit wide, but he got the lead and then he took off clear. Very nice victory. Could have won by more, but, you know, Flavian Pratt didn't want to kill the horse that day. And then the San Antonio at Santa Anita, mile 16th, December the 26th. Horse finished fourth by four lengths. Never really got there. Uh, and then before that, he had a decent third place finish in the Clark Handicap at Churchill. Finished third by one quarter lengths. Closed up well. It wasn't a bad outing. You know, his last victory came in the San Antonio of 2017 at Santa Anita. He won by lane, closed up well, and he had a great victory there. And then before that, his victory before came in the Jack Club Gold Cup here in New York, a mile and a quarter on uh, October the 8th of 2016. Horse won by half length, th uh, 7 to 2, third choice. He just got a great turn of it there. I think he should love this distance of ground. 5-2, not the best price, but, you know, and other legs of the multi-race uh, pick of this pick three, I think are going to find nicer prices, especially in the next race, but you have to wait to get to there. But um, another horse I'm going to talk about is a three-horse hard study. Um, he's at 5-2. to Manny Franco's on this one. Five-year-old horse by Big Brown. Um, you know, uh, on any other day, Big Brown should have got that mile and a half distance, but, you know, third race in um, five weeks, you know, probably cost his horse to victory 10 years ago but um you know this horse should definitely get this distance of ground he did win the flat of the uh, hard city study won the um the, the belmont here at belmont a few weeks ago mile three eights in the flat out local prep race for this race won by five and a half lengths sat back early but he got the lead and then he took off a very nice victory for this horse before that at gold street mile eighth march 30th an optional six two claimer horse won by one quarter lengths sat back early but he got the lead and then he took off clear there and then in the birdstone at saratoga 2800 meters mile three quarters. Horse won by two and a half lengths. He had a decent turn of foot. He likes to stay in kind of distance, and I think here today he can get a piece of it. He's a horse I'm definitely going to use on my multi-race. Um, now, you know, I'm not using war story here because i just don't think he's a very good horse and especially from the outside i think he's gonna have to do a lot of lot uh to get the victory um last year's brooklyn was uh, not the best of you know in quality terms it wasn't the best of races uh and he just won very easily but this year it's a lot tougher race and it's a lot you know he's a lot you know it's gonna be a bigger challenge for him this year um he's not a horse i would use. Um, but to recap my bets for now for today's fifth race from Belmont, it's the 130th running of the Grade 2 Brooklyn Invitational. I'm going to go as a top selection, the two-horse opportunity. I'm going to go 2-3-4-9 in the Superfecta. I'll go 2-3 in uh, multi-race pick three. So now let's get on to race number six from Belmont. Race 6 from Belmont. It's the 35th running of the Jayapur Invitational. Grade 2, purse $400,000. This race is for 4-year-olds and upwards. Field of 8 horses going the distance of ground of 1,200 meters or the distance of ground of 6 furlongs on the Widener Turf Course. 1,200 meters, 6 furlongs, the Widener Turf Course. The rails are down, so they'll be running against the hedge. My top selection here, I like the eight horse holding gold. I'm gonna go eight five four two in the superfecta. Eight five four two super. Um to the multi race scenario, I'm probably gonna pay you know, I'm gonna play the pick three starting off race number 
five. Um, I, but uh, in this like, uh, in, in the pick three, I'm going to go with the eight horse holding gold. I'm going to use the five horse disco partner also. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go too deep, it looks like. But uh, my top selection, the eight horse holding gold, gold, 12 to 1. Tyler Gaffleone is on this five year old gelding by Lonro. Mark Hadsley trains. They sent his horse to the Middle East to run his most recent outing, the 31st of March at Maidan. Six furlongs in the Group 1 Alquaz Sprint. And this horse finished seventh by one quarter lengths. You know, it didn't break all that well and just had no turn of foot. It just wasn't his day to win. That's one of the toughest sprinting races of the uh, of the year, and he just wasn't really getting there. And just keep in mind, no American-based turf horse has ever won uh, and made on, on in the UAE on Dubai World Cup night. Uh, so, you know, he just didn't run there. Before then, the Colonel Power at Fairgrounds, five and a half on February the 17th. This horse won by half length. Closing up from the back of the pack, had a great turn of foot at the quarter pole, and he got there. Very nice race for this horse. Major improvement off the start before which, which came in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint at Del Mar. Five furlongs November the 4th. Horse finished seventh by one and three quarter lengths. A little bit of an all-out finish and he just never got there at the end. Uh, and then before then the turf monsters at the uh, parks. Five furlongs September the 4th. He finished sixth by one and three quarter lengths. Didn't have the best of beginnings and I think that cost him a better position at the end. He really couldn't get there. But this race you're going to see a hell of a lot of pace in it. And um, you know the closers will really do well. This horse is a closer. Even with the wide poster I think he should run a big one. He's 1-0 here at Belmont. He ran this race last year and he finished third by length closing up well at the end it was a decent effort for this horse after that he finished second in the Troy at Saratoga and then a disappointing race at Parks but um, you know he's gonna have a good run here today at 12 to 1 he'll be used for me in the multi race and uh, I'll do a nice little win wager on him um, another horse I'm gonna use in the multi-race pick three, which starts off race number five, uh, I, I, I'm going to use the the five horse disco partner. Um, he won this race very nicely last year. Um, you know, in last year's Jaipur, he, he going six furlongs, one by half line, closed up well, beating stable mates, a pure sensation who set a wicked fast pace. You know, the, the, they set the track record, I believe, in one oh five and three fifths, which I think might have been even the world record for six furlongs on turf. They were really flying, and this horse just won very nicely. After that, in the first Bit an apple here at Belmont. One mile on closing weekend, July the 15th. Horse won by three and a quarter lengths, and again, closed up well to a good victory. Before then, the four star Dave would throw that race out. About 20 minutes to post, it, it, it poured at Saratoga, and the ground was just very wet. And this horse just never really got a piece of it. And plus, world approval it was a lot better mile or horse that day. But before that came, after that, finished, uh, won the Belmont turf sprint, and then finished third in the Bridge Cup turf sprint, closing up well. Um, I like this horse a lot here today. Um, it's definitely a closer you're going to see a fast pace in this one and i think the closer rules will, will get the the uh the bob in this one so watch out so to recap my bets for the sixth from belmont it's the 35th running of the gray two 400,000 jaipur invitational as a top selection i'll use the eight horse holding gold i'll go eight five four two in the superfecta i'll go eight five in a multi-race pick three so now let's get on to race number seven from belmont Race number seven from Belmont. It's the 34th running of the Woody Stevens, presented by Mohegan Sun. It's a grade two race going for a purse of $400,000. This race is for three-year-olds here. Field of a dozen horses, 12 horses going the distance of ground of 1,400 meters or the distance of ground of seven furlongs on the Belmont main track. 1,400 meters, seven furlongs. My top selection here, I like the number 12 horse, Strike Power. I'm going to go 12-3-9-8 in the Superfecta. Now to a multi-race scenario, if you're going to play the pick 5, I'm going to save money for the pick um, 4 actually, um, which starts next race, so stick around for that, uh, which I like quite a few prices in that sequence in the late pick 4, or the all-stakes pick 4, whatever. But um, in the multi-race, if you wanted to play for race 7, um, I, I might do a, a pick 3, which begins with race five or so um but um multi-race finally get to it i'm gonna use, i'm gonna use the 12 horse here i'm gonna use the three horse engage and i would use the nine horse promises fulfilled i think he can run a big one at 12 20 definitely can run a big one uh just going off odds so 12 3 9 i would use in the multi-race um 12 3 9 8 in the super not superfecta scenario uh that's basically my top four but uh, my top selection here the 12 horse strike power nine to two john velasquez is on this drill called by spice town his most recent adding came at goldstream park Mark March 31st, I'm on the 8th in the Florida Derby. This horse finished 8th by 34 and 3 quarter lengths. You know, didn't have to, you know, that day, from the rail, had to be used a lot 
to get the lead, and he just really couldn't keep up with them. Uh, you know, weakened out of it, you know, basically at the 5 eighths pole <laughs> from home. Uh, it just wasn't his day to win. I think coming back to 7 furlongs here, he's, he's bred to go this distance, and I just think he'll run a lot better of a race. Before the 3rd of March at Goldstream, mile 16th in the Fountain of Youth, Swartz finished second by two and a quarter lengths. He, he ran well that day, finishing second behind Promises Fulfilled, who set some easy fractions. It wasn't a bad run there. And then before then, the swell at Goldstream, seven furlongs. He won by two and three quarter lengths on the pace all throughout. Very easy victory. He's been trading well. His only downfall is the wide post draw, but he should, he should definitely get the distance. And I think at nine to two, he's a horse you really want. I'm using him as a top selection. I think the three horse engage is another horse that could run a big one. Uh, you know, he's 4-1. to one. Jose Ortiz is on this one for Chad Brown. It's real cold by Into the Mischief. This horse is most recent out and came on the 13th of May here at Belmont on a very muddy day. Six frongs in the gold fever. She won by nose. She only had two other rivals, and she she, she won nicely, but um, you know, she was a little bit wide also. But, you know, it, it was a decent win. It wasn't the most impressive, but uh, I personally, I actually think the race before uh, was a lot better of a race. Before that, in the Bayshore at Aqueduct, seven frongs, April 7th. This horse been second by four lengths behind National Flag. This horse was set off as a favorite and didn't have the best beginnings, but closed up well at the end. It wasn't a bad stretch run for this horse. And then the maturity here at Belmont last fall, six furlongs. Horse won by three and a half lengths. Sat back early, but closed up well. I think with a good inside post charge here today for, on a fast ground, I think this horse should definitely get a piece of it. Along with the nine horse promises fulfilled, 12 to 1. Luis Saez is on this one. This trio called by Shackleford. Um, this horse should really like this one. Turn seven furlongs. Um, um, but his last race, a mile and a quarter at Churchill in the Kentucky Derby, sort of finished fifth by 39 and three quarter lengths, set the pace for the first about half mile, and then he just folded under, really just hit the wall. It wasn't his day to win. Before that, in the Florida Derby at Goldstream, mile and eighth, horse finished ninth by 35 and a quarter lengths, set the pace early on, and then he had to be used early. You know, he just he just couldn't keep up with them. And then before then, the Fountain View, where he set some easy fractions, he won by two and a quarter lengths. He won from the outside, and, you know, he just set easy fractions, and he won. A decent effort there. Um, but this horse, cutting back to seven furlongs here today at 12 to 1, training well. I think he's a horse you definitely want on your multi-race ticket. Um, I'll use him on my pick three, whatever I decide to play. You know, the pick five is just a little bit too much. Uh, it's going to cost too much money for me to play, um, so I'm not going to play it. But I'm definitely going to play the pick four. But if you play the pick five, use this horse. So to recap my bets for the seventh from Belmont Park, it's the 34th running of the grade two Woody Stevens. As a top selection here, I like the 12 horse strike power. Power. I'm going to go 12-3-9-8 in the Superfecta. I'll go 12-3-9 in a multi-race scenario. So now let's get on to race number 8 from Belmont. Race number 8 from Belmont. It's the 25th running of the Longines, just a game. Grade 1 per $700,000. This race is for fillies and mares, 4-year-olds, and upwards. Field of, if we could ever get the iPad to loan, field of a few horses here. It always happens during these big videos that my iPad never wants to load, and it's so annoying. We have a field of eight horses going the distance of ground of 1,600 meters, or the distance of ground of one mile on the Widener turf course. 1,600 meters, one mile. This is the beginning of a late pick four, uh, or an all-stakes pick four that's 1.5 million guaranteed. Um, you know, the last few weeks, I, I, I with the rain Churchill uh, at Churchill Derby weekend, I didn't bet a lot there. I only bet one horse that was audible, and we all know what he did, finished third. I had one place on him. Uh, at Pimlico, the track was playing so funny uh, Preakness weekend, and all the favorites were winning. I didn't even bother betting one nickel basically or in dime um so in the last week in the last uh, month i bet probably about 30 bucks um i had a uh, 20 uh, 10 to win in place on a horse at uh, uh in, in the derby audible and then i had um uh, five to win in place so in a horse this past weekend in france in the um Pre day, uh, the jockey club, the horse that won at seven two. So I made, I broke out even about, uh, by about seven bucks or so, uh, with the last months of betting. Uh, so, but uh, on top of that, I, I you know, I, I've been building up a, a bankroll and I've been waiting for a day to use it. This day, I think I'm gonna definitely be using it because this all stakes pick four. It looks incredible, one point five guaranteed, and uh, I will have a ticket here. Um, so uh, my top selection here in the in the justy game, um, I like the two horse dream dancing. I'm gonna go two. Five seven three in the superfecta two five 
seven three super uh topic number two dream dancing will be used on a multi-race ticket along with the five horse proctor's ledge um and uh, I, i'll probably use a raving beauty also um i think she could get a piece of it at five to two um so i'm gonna go to uh, three deep here two five seven in the pick four i'll go two five seven three in my multi-race, um, uh, 2573 in my Superfecta, 257 in the um, in, in the pick four. But my top selection here, 20 to 1, long shot on the board, uh, Dream Dancing, Mark Hasse trains, Julien Leperu runs, uh, rides this one. His source's most recent ad came Derby Weekend at Churchill, May the 5th, one mile in the Distaff Turf Mile. His horse finished fourth by two lengths, a little bit wide, but closed up well at the end. It wasn't a bad run there. Uh, before... Before that, the Shawnee River at Gulfstream, mile 8th, February the 10th, horse finished 7th by 3 and 3 quarter lengths, sat towards the back of the pack most of the race, and really just didn't show a lot there. And then before that, the Marshua River at Gulfstream, mile 16th, January the 10th, horse finished second by 1 and 3 quarter lengths, stalked early, she just missed at the end, but she ran a great race there. If the ground has a little bit moisture into it, she should, you know, she, she she should love it a little bit more. But she can run on firm ground also. But a little moisture in it. If, if the ground's good, she's gonna really like it. Um, her her last victory came at Del Mar Oaks at Del Mar August nineteenth last year, mile eighth. Horse won by a nose. She closed up in the back of the pack to get that good victory there um, from a wide post draw. A uh, very nice race. After that, she finished seventh in the QE two Cup at at um, Gulf at Keeneland, where she just didn't have the best of trips. And then after that, she finished second in the Marshall River, which I mentioned already. But uh, She's 1-0 and here on this turf course. Uh, that one race came in the here at Belmont last uh, Belmont Stakes Festival weekend. Um, Mom eighth in the Wonder again. Uh, that race usually went on. Thursday, uh, this horse finished third in that race by three and a half lengths. Mom eighth on the inner turf. New Money Honey had the speed from the inside, which you need on the inner turf course. This horse, the, the inner turf course at Belmont does not play towards closers. The widener is very fair, but the inner turf course is speed, speed, speed. This horse just really didn't have the best of moves that day. Just couldn't catch the winner. Uh, but so, uh, like I said, the widener does play towards closers, and this horse closing from the back of the pack at twenty to one with less speed in this one, I think she could definitely get it. At you know twenty to one, she, she's going to get a nice win wager for me also along with being on my um multi-race tickets watch out for her uh another horse i'd like here is going to be the number five horse proctor's ledge four to one john velasquez is on this four-year-old fully by ghost zapper this horse's most recent outing came in the distaff turf mile churchill a few weeks ago one mile may the fifth this horse won by half length he stalked early but he quickened up nicely and he had a very nice victory that day um you know at six and a half to one decent effort before then the jenny wiley at keelan mile 16th april the 14th he finished the eighth by seven and a quarter lengths and just sat eighth most of the race never was really there it wasn't his day to win and then the Hillsborough, Tampa, Mount Eighth, March 10th. Horse finished second by head. Stalked early from a wide post draw. Actually had the lead and then lost the right the wire in an all out finish. But she ran her heart out there. Um, you know, coming here for Belmont for the first time shouldn't be a problem. You know, this horse is a good stalking position kind of horse. At 4 to 1, watch out for her. Along with the number seven horse, A Raving Beauty, five year old mare by Master Craftsman, Chad Brown trains, I read her T's Juniors on this one. This horse made her first start stateside in the Bugay a few weeks ago, mile 16th in her turf. Horse won by three lengths, sat a little bit closer that day, got the lead, and then she took off clear. Very nice victory for this horse. Before that, in Italy, in the uh, Primo Lydia Tessio Stakes, a group one there. This horse finished second by two lengths, and I couldn't find a replay for this race, but according to the running line, this horse chased the leaders. Led three furlongs out, and then he headed a hundred yards. Uh, wasn't no match for the winner, um, so determine that what you want. But um, but before that, you did find a replay for his German races here on YouTube in the Group um, Three uh, Land. London Sant Dusseldorf Sticks. Uh, this horse finished second by two and three quarter lengths, and you know was from the front end, quickened up nicely, had a very nice victory. Uh, this horse sitting a little bit closer today, I think she'd get a piece of it. But five to two is a bad price in this wide open race, but she can get a piece of it. But like I said, five to not my best of uh, not the best of prices, but um, there's other value in this race. So to recap my bets now for the eighth from Belmont. It's the 25th running of the Grade 1 Just Game, the 700,000 Just Game. As a top selection here, I'm going to go with the number 2 horse, Dream Dancing. I'm going to go 2-5-7-3 in the Superfecta. I'll go 2-5-7 to start off the pick 4. So now let's get on to race number 9 from Belmont. 
Race number nine from Belmont Park. It's the 125th running of the Metropolitan Handicap, the Met Mile. It's a grade one race here, going for a purse of $1.2 million. It's a handicap for three-year-olds and upwards. Field of 11 horses going the distance of ground of 1,600 meters or the distance of ground of one mile here on the Belmont main track. 1,600 meters, one mile. My top selection here. I like the number six horse, one liner. I'm gonna go six two one five in the superfecta, six two one five super. Uh, in a multi race scenario, uh, I'll use the six horse one liner. I'll definitely use the one horse minor biscuits, and I'll use the two horse bull Oro. I'll go to three deep here. But uh, my top selection, the six horse one liner, twelve to one. I rat Ortiz Juniors on this four year old cult by Into the Mischief. Top Hunter trains. This horse's most recent outing came on the 18th of May at Pimlico, a mile three sixteenths in the Grade Three Pimlico special. This horse finished second by four and a half lengths that day. Sat second most of the race behind Irish War Cry, who just sat on the front end most race and just had a little bit of a better run. This horse just wasn't catching him that day. Before then, an optional lady claimed our keen on mile 16th, April 21st. This horse won by one and a quarter lengths. Had what you want from the inside. Speed from the rail at Keeneland. You know, took off clear at the end. A, you know, a decent turn of foot for this horse there. And then before that, at Goldstream, seven furlongs, off 75 claimer, first start in nearly a year. Horse finished third by five lengths. He definitely need the race. That was an allowance race that could have been, a, uh, you know, a great three race. Minor Biscuits actually finished second. Um, he was running back in this one today. That was his local prep race for the Dubai Sha, the, the Golden Shaheen at uh, Maidan, which he won in impressive fashion. But, uh, you know, this horse, he, he needed that race off the break. But he won his first three very easily. He's a horse that could sit a lot closer to the pace here. Um, not setting it, but, you know, Know, stalking position, and I think you're a 12 to 1. He's a horse you definitely want on your ticket. Um, another horse I like here is, is the um, is, is gonna be the two horse, uh, uh, um, the two horse Bolt the Oro. Um, he's at uh, it's a four to one. Um, it's three old Colt by Medalli the Oro. I always thought of Bolt the Oro not of a mile and a quarter horse, but as a good miler, a, mi a one turn miles up this horse's alley a lot. He is facing the older horses here, and he gets a little bit of a weight break of 114 pounds, which I think is a Good weight for the Ron Drew gets on this one for the first time. His most recent outing came in the Kentucky Derby at Churchill, mile a quarter, made the fifth. He finished 12th by 24 and a quarter lengths, stalked early, then he hit the wall around the far turn. Just really couldn't keep up with him. Kind of what, have I, what I expected that day. He wasn't getting the mile and a quarter, but one turn mile, she really like. Before then, the Santa Anita uh, Derby at Santa Anita, mile on the 8th, uh, April 7th, he finished second by three lengths behind Justify, who put on a show that day on the front end. This horse just wasn't catching him that day. And then the San Felipe, Santa Anita, mile 16th, March 10th, horse finished second by a head, sat back early, challenged McKenzie early on around the far turn, got bumped, and he, he, he got placed first due to disqualification, which was, you know, I don't think he should have been disqualified, McKenzie, but, uh, uh, you know, still, this they, they both horses ran determined races, uh, and this horse was running a race off the layoff in the Bruce Cup Juvenile before that, Del Mar, mile 16th. He was screwed from the poster. I finished third by five and a quarter lengths, so and really just never got there. Um, but, um, like I said, he's a, I think he's going to be a great miler, one-term miler, four to one here today with a weight break. He's trained well, watch out for him. Another horse I like here is the one horse Mind Your Biscuits, five to two, five year old horse by P Posse. Chap Summers trains Joel Rosario gets on this one. This horse probably ran one of the best races I've ever seen in the, the UAE. Uh, that came 31st of March and made on six furlongs in the grade in the Group One Golden Shaheen. This horse won by head, and at the eighth pole you thought, now nah, this horse is going to win. Sixteenth pole you thought, now nah, the horse is, isn't going to win. And then the final 16th of mile, this horse, the, the turn of foot this horse had that day to get the, the victory was just incredible. And that 16th of mile, he just sprouted wings and he got there. A very good victory for this horse on a racetrack that does not play towards closers. It's speed, speed, speed. Even World Cup night this year was speed, speed, speed you know, to the thousandth max. But this horse just ran a hell of a race there. Um, before that, his first outing of the year in the uh, Goldstream Park, seven furlongs in that allowance race, which I said earlier could have been a graded race. He finished second by a head. He just missed at the end, but, he, you know, he needed the race by looking at it. And then the cigar mile to Aqueduct, one mile. He finished second by five and a quarter lengths. He wasn't catching sharp as Taku, who just ran a little bit of a better race on the front end. But um, I think here, coming back to Belmont, where he's four and two at his home base, I think he can run a big one. Uh, I'll take my chances with him. 
like I said, that last phrase was very impressive. Uh, five to two, watch out for him. So to recap my bets for the ninth from Belmont, it's the 125th running of the Grade One Met Mile, the Metropolitan Handicap. Gonna go as a top selection, the six horse one liner. I'm gonna go six two one. Five in the Super Factor 6215 Super. I'll go 621 in a multi race scenario. So now let's get on to race number. Race number 10 from Belmont. It's the 117th running of the Manhattan. It's a grade one race going for a purse of $1 million. This race is for four year olds and upwards. Field of 13 horses going the distance of ground of 2,000 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and one quarter on the inner turf course here at Belmont Park. 2,000 meters, a mile and a quarter. My top selection in this race, I like the number two horse here. Number two, one go, all go. I'm going to go 2-10-3-8. 2 10 3 8 in the Superfecta. I'm going to go th four deep here in my multi-race scenario tickets um whatever it's going to be a pick four pick three whatever i decide to play but um my top selection here the two horse one go all go 12 to one chris landeros is on this six-year-old horse by fairbanks charles dickey trains this one this horse's most recent outing came on the 12th of may here at belmont mile three eights inner turf course in the local prep race the grade one man of war this horse finished third by length stumbled at the beginning had to be rushed after that um to set the pace and he just lost it right before the wire since he was used early on i think that's what probably cost him the victory um hopefully here with with a better inside post drive doesn't stumble um sitting on the front end i think he could get away with it um these inner turf course races at belmont tend to be more towards uh front runner horses this horse sits a little bit closer and uh you know i i just think he could really go away with it before the to 21st of april at Keeneland, a mile and a half in the grade to Elkhorn. His horse won by three quarters of a length that day. He was on the lead all throughout, and he had a very nice victory, but according to the comment line, he did bleed during the, va during the race, so you know, but he still won, but um, you know, he did run next, next start quite nicely, but um, you know, he just bled there. And then before that, on 31st of March at Goldstream, a mile and a half in the grade two Pan American, horse finished second by four and three quarter lengths. He set the pace early on, but high hap, he just had a little bit of a turn, better turn of foot to get the victory there. Um, and, and then before that, on the McDermott, the horse finished second by three quarters length. Sadler's Joy basically closed up from nowhere to get the victory. This horse just missed, but he ran a great race. But um, you know, he, he's a speed oriented horse. He's on the speed favoring race course. I think at 12 to one, he's a horse you definitely want in your ticket. Along with the 10 horse here, um, Beach Patrol 5 to 2. Joe El Rosario is on this five year old horse by Lemon Drop Kid, who won the 99 Belmont Stakes here at Belmont, uh, being charismatic, if I believe, if I'm correct. Um, but, um, you know, this horse's most recent outing came up about five weeks ago now at Churchill. Monley at the Yielding Ground, the Turf Classic. He finished second by three quarters length. He sat second most of the race from a wide post draw. Yoshida, who's actually going to run next week and uh, or two weeks in Royal Ascot, uh, ran a little bit of a better race closing up well. This horse just couldn't get there. Um, before then, the Breers Cup turf at Del Mar, mile and a half, November the 4th. He finished second by half length, stalking most of the race. He ran a lot better race than I expected him to. Uh, you know, Talismanic, the French horse, just ran a little, you know, had the better turn of foot, but this horse ran a great race there. And then the turf classic invitation of Belmont, mile and a half, sep September 30th. Horse won by five lengths, closed up well, and just had a very nice, easy victory from that uh, front end style he has. Uh, him, again, sitting a little bit closer here today. I think he can run a big one. Watch out for him. You know, the three horse here, high happy, seven to two. Luis Saez is on this one for Todd Fletcher, six year old horse by Pure Prize. You know, this horse is a bit of a nice one. Um, he, he likes this distance of ground, uh, the extended, um, you know, mile and a quarter to a mile and a half. Um, his most recent outing came in the local prep, the Man of War here at Belmont, mile three. It's May the 12th. He won by half length. He stalked early, got the lead, and he held on a very nice victory for this horse off, off, off a little bit of a break. Before that, in the Pan American, he won by two and three quarter lengths. He stalked early, but got the lead, and then he took off clear. A very nice victory for him. And then first start on the Care of Top Pletcher in the Goldstream Park turf at Goldstream on the 8th, February 10th. Horse finished third by length, a little bit wide, and he just never was 
y you know, he needed the extra furlong definitely that day. Um, but getting the on a quarter here today, sitting a little bit closer, I think he'd get a piece of it 7-2. to two. Say there's a major pace meltdown. Um, I think the 8-horse Sadler's Joy is a horse you want. Um, he's 8-1. to one. Javier Castellano's on this one. 5-year-old horse by Kitten's Joy. Tom Albatroni trains. Um, you know, this horse is a closer. He finished second in the Man of War a few weeks ago by half length, closing off basically from nowhere. Ran well there. In the Pan American, he finished fourth. A little you know, a little traffic trouble and just couldn't get there at the end. Uh, and then before then, McDermott, probably one of his best races of his lifetime, he you know, he closed up from the back of the pack, basically last at the quarter pole, got there in the end by three quarters length. A great victory for this horse. Um, but he, one thing to keep in mind, he is 7-1 and one here at Belmont. And, uh, you, you know, like I said, this, ho this race... You know, the, the inner turf course is for front runners. This horse is a deep closer. I don't see him changing tactics here today, but if there's a major pace meltdown, I think at H1, him closing up well, he could definitely get there with the pace meltdown. But um, he'll be used as insurance on my multi race tickets, just in case that happens. Um, that's why I have him fourth on my Super Facta. I like him fourth best. But um, he's definitely good enough to get the, the Super Facta, but he's, I don't know if he's good enough to get the, um, the win. Um, but um, to recap my bets, uh, to recap my bets now for the 10th from Belmont. It's the 117th running of the grade one million dollar Manhattan. As a top selection here, I'm going to go with the number two horse. One go, all go. I'm going to go 210-3-8 in the Superfecta. I'll go 210-3-8 in my multi-race ticket. So now let's get on to race number 11 from Belmont. Race number 11 from Belmont. It's the feature race of the afternoon. It's the 150th running of the Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Betts. It's a grade one race here going for a purse of $1.5 million. We have a field of 10 three-year-olds going the distance of ground of 2,400 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and a half. The test of champions, one lap around the Belmont main track. 2,400 meters, a mile and a half. And, uh, you know, th this is a good Belmont this year. Um, I could see the race going two ways, justify winning or justify losing. Um, you know, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, how Justify is very beatable, and I do agree with him there. He is very beatable in this race because you did see a little bit of a tired horse, uh, you know, after the Preakness. But um, you know, in this week so far, when he's been here at Belmont uh, training, he looks very nice. I actually think he looks a lot nicer than he did at Pimlico uh, leading up to the Preakness. Um, so um, you know, he, he does look nice. But on the other hand, you know, he, he does look. You know, it's going to be. His, he's he had a lot of races in a short period of time. So it's going to catch up to him some someday. It could be today. Um, but um, I'm going to give you a horse that I think can upset here uh, a little bit. That's going to be the four-horse Hofberg. I think he's the horse that could really run a big race if Justify doesn't show up. I'm going to go 4-3-1-10 in the Superfecta. 4-3-1-10 Super. Uh, I'm going to talk about all the horses in this race. But first, I'm going to talk about my top selection, the four-horse Hofberg. 9-2. Jed Montone. 3 Colt by Tappet. Bill Montrain's. I read Ortiz Jr. gets leg up on this one. This horse's most recent outing came on the 5th of May at Churchill in the Kentucky Derby. Sloppy going a mile and a quarter. This horse finished 7th by 8 and 3 quarter lengths that day and just had a horrible trip. Got bumped at the beginning. Traffic trouble up the ass, you know, he, he, he got, he closed up well at the end, but it wasn't, you know, he, today with a smaller field sitting a little bit closer, I really think he should run a lot better. Before that, he ran the Florida Derby at Gulfstream, a mile and eighth on the 31st of March. He finished second by three lengths, and he closed up very well on a racetrack that does not play towards closers, a little bit wide, but... He, he ran a decent effort behind Audible, who, who went on next start to run second in the, or excuse me, third in the Derby. But um, you know, he ran a good second place finish there in his first start against state, uh, first start against stakes quality horses. And then before that first outing uh, of the year, third of March at Goldstream, mile 16th, main special weight 53,000. His horse won by half length, and he broke from barrier number 11 of 11, which is unheard of at Goldstream, going two turns. But this horse broke on top, well then break on top, broke a little bit mid-pack that day, sat mid-pack most of the race, had a great move around the far turn, and he got there, a very nice victory off the break for this horse, and then he could throw out his first crew run at Saratoga last September. Seven furlongs is not his trip, I think this horse will be a great mile and a quarter horse, to a mile and a half. Um, I think getting the mile and a half today, he should really run a big one. Um, he's been training 
up at Saratoga on the Oklahoma training track, and he actually outworked Good Samaritan, who's running er earlier today in the um, in, in the Met Mile. Um, you know, but this horse, you know, he's been training very well. I think here with a better trip at nine to two, he could maybe upset Justify. <clears throat> so watch out for him. Uh, another horse I think could upset here is the three horse Bravazo, eight to one, Luis Saez is on the Strio Colt by Awesome again. D. Wayne Lucas uh, trains this one. Um, you know, this horse's most recent outing came in the in the Preakness at Pimlico a few weeks ago, mile 3 16th, May the 19th. This horse finished second by half length, a little bit wide, but he was closing up on a racetrack that, that did not play to closures that afternoon. He closed up well, just missed. Wasn't a bad outing of what I saw through the fog. Before that, in the Kentucky Derby at Churchill, stopped going a mile and a quarter. This horse finished six by eight lengths that day. You know, he he said about mid pack, a horrible beginning, a little bit wide. He just never had a good run there. It was just not his best of days. And then before then, Louisiana Derby at Fairgrounds, mile eighth, March 24th. This horse finished the eighth by 21 and a quarter lengths. He stalked early, and then he just never had a good run, never got there. But he did win the Risen Star very nicely on the close to the front end that day. Him sitting a little bit closer here, I think he could definitely run a good race. At 8 1, he'll be used um, on a multi race ticket. Um, the one horse, Justify, who won the Preakness and the Derby um, is a very nice horse. Three Occults by Scat Daddy. Uh, Bob Baffert trains. Mike Smith is on this one. Um, they're going for the Triple Crown here. And like I said, there's two scenarios. He wins or he just doesn't win. Um, there's, you know, he, how much simpler can I s explain it? Um, you know, he, he did run the Preakness last week, a few weeks ago at Pimlico, mile 3 16th, and he did win it by half length on the front end. He got pace, you know, he got a challenge by good magic in the first half mile, but this horse overcame him to hold on. You know, he, he did see a tired horse after the race, but personally, I think the way he's looked so far in the pitchers and the way he's been going around Belmont and Churchill this last week, he looks a lot better than he did going into the Preakness, and I think here today you're going to see a very strong horse run. Um, before then, the Kentucky Derby, his, you know, his best moment so far, he won by two and a half lengths. He had the best trip that day. He had a very easy lead and he just won very nicely. Before that, against subpar horses in the, the Santa Anita Derby, won by three lengths, just destroyed the field. And then he broke his maiden before that very easily and won in the lounge race after that easily. He's a very nice horse here. Like I, say, like I said, two scenarios. He wins or he loses. N n nothing simpler than that. But like I said, he's been training very well. He looks, Like I said, he looks a lot better now than he did before the Preakness. I think he's put on a little bit more muscle, it looks like. And, uh, you know, he, he, a lot of, there's a different, um, a lot of people think a mile and a half races, the closers are going to win. That's not the case because it's all about stamina. You're going to see a lot clo slower pace in this race. And... With a slower pace, clo deep closers have uh, basically no chance unless there's a big pace meltdown, which I highly doubt. But this horse, I, I from the rail, I, I see him going somewhat close to the lead, if not setting the pace. And if he could get some easy quarters into him, you know... I, I don't think this horse could be stopped, but, uh, you know, he's trying to do something that does not happen a lot. <laughs> you know, he's trying, you know, since 1978, only two other horses, you know, there was a big 30-year gap between, um, you know, Affirmed and uh, American Pharaoh. Hopefully, a, you know, a, a three-year gap between American Pharaoh and today, you know, could be good. Uh, like I said, I think this horse should run a very big race. Um, at four to five, he'll be used on a multi-race ticket. Um, like I said, I can't stress this enough. He, he looks a lot better th this week than he did before going into the Preakness. Um, so watch out for him at four to five. Um, a horse I have fourth on my super facta ticket. I'm not, I don't think he's good enough to win, but he's a bit of a closure to get on t into your uh, bottoms of the super factors, trifectas. That's a 10 horse blended citizen. 15 to 1. Kyle Frey is on this one for Doug O'Neill. He ran a great race in the Peter Pan a few weeks ago here at Belmont, the local preparation for the Belmont Stakes. Mon Lath made the 12th. Horse won by one and a half lengths that day. It was a little bit wide, but closed up well from the back of the pack. A great victory for this horse. Before that in the bluegrass, he finished fifth by four and three quarter lengths. He had a little bit of a turn of foot at the end, but it wasn't enough to win there. And then the uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes, or the Spiral of Terrifoy, he won by a neck, closing up well from the back of the pack. Like I said, he's not def he's not good enough to win, but he's definitely a horse you want on your Superfecta, or your Trifecta at the bottom of it. Um, he, he's the kind of horse that maybe could close up for second, but not the win. You know, or third or fourth, but not not the win. Uh, so he'll be uh, used at the bottoms. Uh, now to go over the, some of the other horses in this race. Um, let's start off with the two-horse Free Drop Billy 
You know, he's a horse I might use at the bottom of a Superfecta ticket. You know, he ran the Derby a few weeks ago, and he finished 16th by 41 lengths. He was, you know, towards the back of the pack most of the race. Didn't break all that well and just really had nothing. I think the sloppy going had something to do with it. Hopefully with a firm, fast ground here today, he'll run a little bit better. Before then, the Bluegrass, he finished 4th by 4 lengths, and he didn't have the best of trips. A lot of traffic trouble there, um, to the point of he was placed 3rd through a disqualification. Um, because the horse uh, sporting chance who interfered with him got disqualified and he got moved up but um, you know he, he, he just traffic there before then the Gotham he finished third horrible beginning closed up a little bit at the end and then the holy bully finished second sitting second most of the race behind audible who just ran a little bit better of a race um you know he is he was a good two-year-old but his three-year-old campaign so far he hasn't really excelled um not good enough to win but a horse definitely you want to use on your super um going now to the five horse restoring hope another horse i would definitely use in your superfecta uh florent Giroux is on this one for bob afford three-year-old colt by giants causeway this horse a few weeks ago in the pat day mile ho ran ho horse ran shitty he finished 12th by four uh, 24 lengths a little bit wide and just had nothing. Didn't show up at all. Before then, the Wood Memorial across town at Aqueduct. He finished third by five and a quarter lengths. You know, a little bit wide, but he was closing up well at the end. And then he broke his maiden very nicely at Santa Anita. Again, a horse good enough to get the Superfecta. To win, you'll need a very... You'll need a, a few prayers up to, up above, um, even though I don't like that. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you just have to do a lot to him. But a horse, trifecta, superfecta, he could definitely get a piece of it. The six-horse Gronkowski is a horse I would never use in a ticket here. Um, you know, he's coming in from England to run, and uh, he's been running against subpar horses in England, class five horses. The, the all-weather races in England are basically how do i explain them to an american uh, the, the all-weather races are inner track races in the middle of like january february at aqueduct they're just not good horses he was running in, in not so good races you know he, he won against them but they were crappy horses um he's a horse i i he, he's just not a use for me anywhere. Throw him out. He's 12 to 1. He's going to get better into the ground because his name is Gronkowski. All the New England fans betting him. But um, personally, if I was making this morning line, he would be 99 to 1. Not a use for me anywhere. The, ten, the seven horse, 10 folds. 12 to 1. Ricardo Santana Jr. is on this one for Steve Asmussen. You know, he's another horse. Super Factor definitely could get down there. He, he ran third in the Preakness a few weeks ago, closing up well after not the best trip going into the first turn. But he he decent turn of foot at the end. You know, he ran well. Before then, the Arkansas Derby, he finished fifth, and he just didn't have the best of runs. A little bit wide, bumped around. He just couldn't get there. Uh, but before that, he won very nicely at Oakland in some two allowance, an allowance race in main special weight. Won those races very easily. Um, like I said, a good horse. Probably get a superfecta. Vino Rosso is a weird horse. Um, he, he's a lot like Justify. I, I could see him running a good race, or he's just going to finish last. Um, you know, he, he, he finished ninth in the Derby a few weeks ago. Um, you know, he, he just didn't have the best of moves that day. Never really got there. It wasn't his day to win. Before that, he won the Wood Memorial very easily by three lengths. But, you know, he it, 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 it's a different race, the Wood Memorial, than the Belmont. And then he finished fourth in the Tampa Bay Derby third in the Sam F. Davis. Um, he's a horse I would, you know, he, he, I don't know if, I, I wouldn't use him for a trifecta, but I use him on the bottom end of the superfecta. To win, you're going to need a very long shot for him. Uh, like I said, he's either going to run very big or he's going to run last. Uh, the nine horse Noble Indy is another horse I probably won't use anywhere. Um, he'll have to run a hell of a race to win. He did win Louisiana Derby, fighting back a little bit, uh, but, uh, you, you know, he's just not a use for me um, here. Um, so those are my uh, tips here. Uh, or my thoughts about some of the horses. So to recount my selections now for race number 11 from Belmont, it's the 150th running of the Belmont Stakes, the Grade 1 Belmont Stakes. As a top selection here, I'll go with the four-horse Hofburg. I'm going to go 4-3-1 in the multi-race pick 6, pick 5, pick 4, whatever I decide to play. Uh, so 4-3-1. Um, you know, if, ju if, ju if Justify wins, I'll applaud me. You know, you always want to see a Triple Crown winner, uh, but uh, you have to stick. You have to be realistic also. It hasn't happened a lot, uh, and I think Hofburg coming into this race off a little bit of a break he should really run a good run uh but uh, you know there's a little part of me that wants justify to win also uh so four three one for me in the multi-race four three one ten that's my top four or my super factor so good luck to all please follow me on twitter at horse racing kit five for more selections for race courses around the world and join me in a few weeks time for my royal ascot previews here on youtube good luck everybody